Hey everyone, welcome. So this is the Integrated Math 2 practice test. Question number one. Some of the videos in this playlist that you'll see are older ones from last year, but the questions are the same, so I'm not going to reshoot them just because that would be a huge waste of time. So if you see different, like it's black and white as opposed to green here, just know that it's because it's from the last test, but it's also in this test. And if the number doesn't match up, look at the number in the title and not the number on the page. It's just one of those things. Anyway, question number one says, which expression is equivalent to the fifth root of w raised to the third power, or fifth root of w cubed, if you'd prefer? So the thing about radicals is I can actually turn them into a rational exponent. So I can make a fraction exponent. You may call them fractional exponents as well. I tend to do it like this. So say I had, I'm just going to use constant letters here. And we'll call this a, I probably should have used n or something. The root always goes on the bottom. Why does, why does it work that way? I mean, what's an example of how that can work in real life? So if I have the square root of 16, we say it's 4. Well, to look at it deeper in terms of a fractional exponent, I may just rewrite this. This is the square root. We just assume if there isn't any index listed that it's a square root. The number on the outside is the index. So it's 2, because to the second power is squaring something. Similarly, we think of 16 as 16, but it could also be 4 to the second power, because we know 4 times 4 is 16. Now, what we end up with is a situation where I get a fractional exponent of 4 over 2 divided by 2, and I'll show you how that works here in just a second, and it becomes 4 to the first, which is of course just 4. So we're already using this idea all the time. Now visually speaking, I always, uh, or have in the most recent versions of things I've been doing, sort of make a visual to remind myself what to do. So I tend to make a little circle here and then put a little top on it there and then for this one I always make like a little top hat. The reason I do this is because I want to remind myself that in a fractional exponent the index which is of course the root and the exponent have a specific place they go in that fraction. So I could say that this is a you'll notice that the a uh, little top hat makes it look like the n is on top of the line. It's because it goes in the numerator, so it goes up here. And for b, it's down below, so it goes right here. Do you have to do it that way? Of course not. It's just visually speaking, I've done it over and over and over, so now I don't have to think about it as much. I just sort of do the circle and the top hat uh, almost immediately. In fact, in my original explanation, I had to stop myself from doing it so I wouldn't do it. So if I were to look at this again, I'm going to make my circle there, then I'm going to make my little top hat there, so it becomes 4 to the 2 over 2, and gets me right to 4. So what's that have to do with the problem? Who cares, right? Well, it's just a method that you can use. So I'm going to rewrite this one a little bit bigger so that I can see it. I'm getting old. See how formal it is? Fancy. Uh, 3 on top and 5. So that's a way that I could write it as a rational exponent. So I'm going to look at my answers and see what would recreate that. A is not it because it's a division problem and uh, when I do division of the coefficients, so the coefficients here would be the numbers in front, that's this, the big brother operation is divide, the little brother operation is subtract, so that would be subtraction of the exponent. So I would just, I would circle this one, 5 minus 3 is 2, so I'd end up with this. That's not the same as this, it's definitely not the same as this, so that's out. Um, here, same type of thing, 1's divide, 5 minus 3 is 2, so I'd end up with that, not the same. What about these? Well, if I just look at it in this way, I can get a better look at it. Always remember that 5 by itself, or any number by itself, is a fraction with itself over 1. So if you see 100, it's really 100 over 1. Or that's another way that you can rewrite it. So 
the coefficient here, of course, is the one, and I'm raising it to the power of five. So my big brother operation, and if you have no idea what, what big brother or little brother, what are you talking about? There's some videos on the channel that talk about um, properties of exponents, and I explain in more depth how that works. So if you're interested, fine. If you're not, cool in the game. So five. To, so the big brother operation is exponents, so the little brother operation is multiply. One times five is five. Three times one is three. So w to the five-thirds power. Not the same, so that's out as well. Now the last one. Three times one is three. Five times one is five. w to the three-fifths power. So there you go. Not really super difficult if you have a system in place that you can use. And the good thing about building a system is you can do it over and over again and you sort of iron out all those little um, careless errors that people like me tend to make all the time.